Welcome back to the vibrant realm of my latest abstract sketchbook where colours and shapes intertwine in a dance of imagination. In this flip through, we're going to embark on a journey through abstract art, a world where the ordinary transforms into the extraordinary and where emotions find expression in every stroke. Join me as I flip through my latest abstract sketchbook. And I say abstract, as that is what most of the images are. However, the one with the sentient cats is the favorites of my viewers. I put together this sketchbook during the past few months while enjoying some TV time. And most of the time I enjoy having multiple sketchbooks in progress, each with its own unique size and feel. So straight away, the first image there is neurographic. I'm using the neurographic line only. My second one is also a neurographic art piece, but here I've got some circles in it as well. And I'm blending those curves and doing some meditation as I do the actual artwork. This third piece is um, also neurographic inspired. I'm only using circles here and just fleshing them out further. Moving on, I tried some script cursive writing and also brought in the neurographic style there. This one is really like a sunburst coming out and I'm trying to use only muted shades um, of my markers. A bit more practicing with the script there. It's quite a struggle to get the script working. And once more again with gratitude where I'm fading out at, at the top of the letters. This was an, an attempt at doing some basic abstract with the, the polychromos. Um, not thoroughly thrilled with that one, but anyway. Now here we're getting down to it again. I'm putting borders on the pages, I'm gridding out by uh, four by three, and then going back into each square, putting in some little doodly um, artworks there. A further deep dive into a much tighter grid, um, where I've got the squares going, and then I've just got the one yellow square for focus. Now here again, I've got the border on, and I'm using French curves to put these lines in, and then adding some shading to give depth to the art. Another um, practice there using just limited palettes of yellows and blues. This one too is very swoopy, where I create a border, I then uh, divide it up with curves and then doodle within. And once more here we've got the six by four grid and I've gone in there now with uh, pinks and golds. The hair I'm working on this is the Fibonacci shell. I've got a full video on that. I'll put a link there of how I developed it to finally get it correct. It took me three goes to get this actual shape correct. Um, but that again was in the sketchbook using the, the blue and yellow. Here I'm using an oval uh, template and I'm just looking at the negative space behind, showing some kind of flow of a river flowing over some pebbles perhaps. And here's my cloud of cats, a um, hugely popular piece uh, from my viewers as well. And here I get down again to the grid, the six by four grid, and I've put the alphabet in and just using four colors, red, yellow, green, and blue, or pink I should say, and again, taking these, this shape, that the circle shape, which I love, and um, bringing in some negative space and some basic colors. Again, I extrapolated it because I had, it was an uh, alphabet, now I've done numbers, going up to 12. This was just simply the same type of thing as gain, border, curves, then pattern within in a gold pen. I'm breaking out a little bit here. I've got some kind of village and a river, and then I added a guy on a bike. I'm not quite sure where that's going. Again with the circles and the swoopy things looking a little bit like reeds perhaps underwater, but again only filling in the negative space behind the shape. This is a further exploration of this method of border, putting lines through and then filling shapes in using different patterns. This one was slightly different because I'm actually trying to build depth into this abstract it's um, wasn't the easiest thing to do just with markers and once more just in the black and white using the, the the border putting in the swoops and then using inspiration to fill in each one 
Now here I'm attempting with deeper borders. I'm finding this is quite a good look. And I've got some neutral there. It's like a beige and then the black. Similar once more again, um, this time in shades of blue, constantly working through these patterns. It's like repetitively in this sketchbook. Once more with the deeper border. And here I've got a cut out at the top where I'm again using circles and the gold. It's constantly, I'm trying to improve my pattern making. And again, we're quite happy with this one. It's got only straight lines um, and shades of black and yellow. So it's quite a distinctive piece. More circles doing layouts there, again with the deeper border. In a way, I'm trying to create this sketchbook so that I can get ideas of um, real paintings that I would like to do bigger later. So here I've got some little seedlings that are just twining up and they're curling and twirling um, and it's a way of bringing the work up from the bottom of the page. And here I'm using a different shape for the actual drawing, having two curved corners. And there is a cat there if you can see it. This is almost like underwater seedling cat, I'm not sure. Now this was the African violet that I painted. I will put a link to the, the actual full video of how I created this with coloured inks and that's in my sketchbook. And again, I like the way the leaves are going past the border. This one was just further ideas of, that I was working with. I didn't actually finish colouring it. I, I kind of ran out of steam with this one. And then I was watching the Queen's Gambit. What can I tell you? So I had to do a chess set. Um, uh, with some kind of uh, 3D looking chess pieces, just in greys. Here we have a forest and again the tree and the branch are reaching past the border. I was really getting into that, liking the fact that elements within the painting went past the border. Again with the bubbles that are coming up, they're, they're reaching up and high and breaking free from within the borders that I've put on the page. This one again is a combination of pattern and lines, again in the borders. Now this one was more swirly and I was using the three primary colours, red, yellow and um, blue. Um, lots of swirls, lots of dots. I really like the way this, this one came out. And here I took it one step further as though it's rising again from the bottom. So we only have the border on the painting actually below and the top borders just disappeared. This was another exploration of using different type of shape to, in the actual sketchbook of the almost arch, but um, I didn't finish this one either. I, I didn't color it in. I kind of ran out of steam again with this one. It wasn't going anywhere. Here now this looks almost steampunk. It's got the gold and that corner sort of uh, pinky on there. The, um, the darker dusky pink. Taking this one step further where we are now moving these swirls and dots to represent the sea, the ocean, again with the blue and yellow, which I really was loving at that time. Once more with the swirls in, in but now we've got colors of pinks and lilacs. It's not really my favorite color palette, but it, it works, it works. This is clearly, it started off as a sunflower and it eventually turned into, I think a sun, maybe it is a sunflower, but it's got massive rays coming out, the energy's pouring out from that central sun. And then once I did the sun, I thought, well, let's have a go at the moon, where really it's just in, in shades of gray, um, rising over the ocean there. Eh, it's okay, it's not it's not my best piece, clearly. This again was a combination, but here we started with the strong focus in the center, and then we worked out again on the grid with straightforward shapes um, in the pattern. And then this is the last one in this sketchbook. I'd actually got a sepia pen for the first time, and I started again with my circles. I love the border, love the circles, and I was adding dots around them to give shade and depth to this actual piece. So this um, sketchbook that I'm using, it's the looker term, it's the, the, the horizontal one, 
Um, really quite a nice book. I really enjoyed it. it. Took me a long time to do all these sketches and I was really just working um, in the evenings in front of the TV and just enjoying finding each evening just some kind of pattern, constantly trying to work on my pattern development. Um, and I like to use my sketchbooks really as an idea place to put things in that I may develop later in actual other other works. So even though many of them are very similar, it's the style I'm working with at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed this sketchbook flip through and uh, I'll see you again next time. Thank you.